Wow. Amen. Where there is no vision, people perish. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Lord, I bless you. I glorify you for such a time to come and study at your feet. King of glory, Lord of Lord, even as we go into your word right now, let your presence go with us. Give us understanding and give us the wisdom to apply it thereof. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. And before I start, I will not um, hesitate to appreciate our pastors, Pastor Tunde and Pastor Tony, for the opportunity to represent here, them right here in these Bible studies. Thank you for this opportunity. I, do, I am not taking it for granted. God bless you. And everyone listening to me right now, in comfort of your home, anywhere you are listening, I say God bless you. And at the end of this service, indeed, I pray, it is my desire, my prayer, that you will go here with something. You will leave this place with something. You will leave the presence of your television with something. God will bless you richly in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Yeah, like I said earlier, the topic for today is vision, vision, vision. And uh, the anchor scripture is a very popular scripture. It's um, the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 2 to 3. And I read. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end of it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, you are welcome to the month of uh, March, the third month of the year. Um, this year is beginning to run like we can see, and it's our year of maximum impact. Our year of maximum impact. And this month, as a matter of fact, the month of March, the theme is leading the future. Leading the future. Interestingly, you cannot anticipate a bright future without having a vision. You cannot anticipate a bright future without having a vision. So entering into this new year with, this, um, with the coronavirus that has been ravaging the whole world, the entire world, I'm sure that many people are searching for a fresh start. They are searching for a new vision of what God has for them in life. Vision. But I would like us to have some sort of... Um, understanding of the word vision, especially in the context of our Christian faith. Hallelujah. God help us tonight. In the world of optometry, vision measures how clearly a person can see object 20 feet away. In other words, there is a limit to what you can see. This is science, though, not divine, not supernatural. In the business world, it is described as a foundational prompt behind an individual or a corporate body. But this effort, it, it, it describes how, what, what is prompting someone or prompting an organization to make so much effort, to work so hard, to accomplish this, to accomplish that, to do as much as they, as they can do, to get something done or to, uh, to achieve a purpose. As good as this may sound, it might not necessarily be from God. So I, that could be an ambition. Somebody could just be so ambitious, so it is different from vision. 
So now permit me to say that vision is not one of those night dreams. Neither is it a trance. Vision is not what happened during those moments of ecstasy. What then is vision? A godly vision is the unfolding of divine plan and uh, God's purpose in one's life. Unfolding of divine plan and purpose. Everyone is created to fulfill a purpose here on earth. Very clear. Everyone God created is meant to fulfill a purpose here on earth. So the discovery of that purpose on earth is called vision. The discovery of the purpose for which God created you is vision. So it is all about the future. Vision is about the future. Hence, it comes with a, a, a mindset that is developed to attain a desired future outcome. So wherever there is godly vision, there is divine guidance. So if you are going to walk and operate in God's way, then you have to wait and listen to God. So where there is vision, there is divine guidance. Why? God will not allow you, God will not allow me, or allow me to lack the knowledge of where I am going to. God will not allow you to lack the knowledge of where you are going to. Neither will he deprive you of the knowledge of how to get there. So vision comes with divine guidance. Amen. He said to Moses in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, verse 23, verse 20, he said, I have assigned an angel to you to guide you and to lead you and bring you into the place I have prepared for you. Divine guidance. God had a purpose for Moses of which he eventually discovered. But that purpose of his life was to deliver the children, out of, the children of Israel out of the bondage of Egypt. That was the purpose of Moses. So for that to happen, he has to actually align himself with how God is, was going to work that out. Because it is from God. For, the, for this vision of Moses to come to pass, God has to guide Moses all the way. Every step of Moses has to be guided with, by, God's, by, by God's leading. He can't just go by himself. Otherwise, he will fail. God will help us in Jesus' name. There is a Timing to any vision that comes from God. Any vision that comes from God has a timing. It doesn't just happen like that. It's a, there's a time assigned to that vision. Like we have read in our memory verse, I read earlier, the, 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 the first part of it, sorry, the second part of it said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Vision is for an appointed time. Even though Moses was on earth to fulfill that purpose, he never started until he was 80 years. Appointed time. Amen. So we need to divinely, we, we, we need to be guided divinely to be able to, to know when to start and how to start and where, how to go about our vision. Like the children of Israel, we can... We can move at the appointed time to any phase of our vision. So vision is, comes in different phases. So you can only move at the appointed time of every, each and every one of them has their own time. Move at that time. What am I talking about? 
Because the, the, the God himself said that everything will come to pass in his own beautiful time, in his own time. So there's nothing you can do outside the timing of God if you are truly a believer of Christ. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He makes all things beautiful in his own time. Not your own time. Therefore, you must not, you must not uh, allow yourself to just jump out of the timing of God. There is a particular time God has set for that purpose he made you to fulfill on earth. It will not speak well of you as a believer if you, you, you jump out and start and get it wrong. So you rather wait for God to lead you. That is a visionary. Anybody who is a visionary has that uh, comportment to listen to the Holy Spirit. You do not want to waste time and gain nothing. Amen. Therefore, we must learn to operate in God's timing, which is true. That is a true function of divine guidance. Anyone who is operating in God's timing shows that this person is operating in God's guidance. Hallelujah. Amen. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God is committed to lead you. If you are committed to follow him, I'm not sure if you get that right. God is committed to leading you if you are committed to following him. Like I said earlier, vision is about the purpose of your existence. Amen. So I just thought I should just throw some sort of uh, um, background understanding of vision. So now there are some key points I would like us to look at so that we can actually be satisfied tonight that, yes, I know if I'm in the right calling or if I'm doing the right thing, if I'm in the right job. Or what, I mean, we, we need that sort of uh, understanding in our spirit. God will help us in Jesus' name. So number one is that to understand the purpose of our existence and act on his instruction. Very important. Understand the purpose of your existence. Understand why you are here and act on God's instruction. God, one, God revealed his purpose for creating prophet Jeremiah. I want to start with that. God revealed to him the purpose he was created, the purpose he made him. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, Jeremiah 1 5, he said, I know you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Very clear purpose, very clear. Before you were formed, Jeremiah, I know who you are and I have set you apart to be a prophet to the nation. So vision, therefore, requires Jeremiah to discover this purpose. Understand it and follow God's instruction to function in that office of a prophet. Vision requires Jeremiah to understand this purpose and work in it and follow it correctly in order to function in, the, in that office as a prophet. Amen. He also revealed his purpose to um, Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter um, 1, Galatians 1, 15 to 16, Galatians 1, 15 to 16. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his sons 
to me so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with human beings. So, Paul, that's another clear instruction and, 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 and clarity in Paul's spirit that he knew why he was created. So, Paul had to discover this purpose, understand it, and walk in it. Jeremiah's purpose was to be a prophet. Why Paul's purpose was to was to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Different assignment, different callings. By one, by same God. So, I want, I want you to, I want to tell you that you, you, you have a, a purpose for, for God, I mean for being here on earth. You as an individual listening to me, you have a purpose for being here on earth. You are not just here by mistake. You are not here just to pass by. No, there's a purpose. Amen. So, do you know what that purpose is right now? That is very important. Do you know what your purpose is? Do you know why God has created you? Do you know why you are here? I once heard a female preacher preaching, saying that the purpose for which she was created was to be the wife of her husband, who is a pastor. So she, she, he said she was created, as far as she's concerned, that she knew that she was created to be that man's wife. So that having understood that purpose, that he aligned him, herself to every vision of the man. And having done that faithfully and submissively, so now his own vision, his own, his own purpose begins to manifest that she can go everywhere to now preach the gospel. Vision is always given to one person, but there are people that will run the vision with the person. So to her, the vision was given to her husband. She was there to support her. So understanding is very key. Thank God for such woman who understood that. Vision is knowing what you are here for. I have said it over and over. It is a divine insight into God's plan for your, for, for your life. A divine insight into God's plan for your life. If I'm operating in somebody else's office, I will not do well. There's something I am born to do. And when you are doing it, no matter the kind of uh, uh, um, trouble around it, you still find joy in it. Because why? You are not struggling. It's your passion. It's your calling. And you, you, you have discovered it and you are not working it out. Hallelujah. If you discover and understand it, you will not struggle at all. But you will keep struggling when you do not understand the purpose why you are created. Why? Why? Just like um, so, um, some, some gadgets are designed to, f to, to function in certain ways, if you use them to do another, something else, they will not perform. But by the time you pick up telephone, what is it for? It's to make call and receive call. If I turn it to a printing machine, it will not function. Even though they are all electronics. So there is something that you are meant to do. And you can get to the optimal of that when you actually uh, take time to discover it and start functioning in it. Hallelujah. The biggest tragedy in life is to lack the knowledge of why you are created and how to even do what you are meant to do on earth. It's a tragedy if you don't know it. The second point I would like us to understand 
I said, I felt vision is that vision is required in our Christian journey. Otherwise, we will lose focus. Pick that focus is very important in everybody's life. So vision is required in this journey. Otherwise, you lose focus. So having discovered and understood your purpose here on earth, the next thing is to pursue it diligently. Having discovered your purpose here on earth, the next thing you need to do is to pursue it diligently. And one way to pursue and accomplish is to stay focused. Which is why Jesus said in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew 5, 29, Matthew 5, 29, that if the right, if the right hand offends you or offends thee, pluck it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable... For it is profitable for thee that one of thy member should perish, and that and not that the whole body should perish. You just have to be focused. You have to keep away from everything, everything that is capable of stopping you from, from fulfilling your destiny. Everything at all, whatever it is that is capable of stopping you, you have to keep them away from you. You don't need them. Why? You want to be relevant. You want to fulfill. You need to be disciplined and focused. Visionaries are very focused people. Visionaries, they are very, very focused people. You may not understand. So, um, what can make someone... What can make a man who is behind the prison bars and have some sort of comportment to be writing book behind bars? Talking about Apostle Paul. That is the power of vision. Amen. Though in the prison, Apostle Paul did not allow his mind to be locked down. Even though he was behind the bar, he did not allow his mind to be locked down. Why? He has a vision. He got it very clear that he was created to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. So he was rather courageous than being emotional in that situation where he was kept behind the bar. So he was courageous. He was thinking ahead. What else can I do even though I am here? Tied down. So he was always mindful of the people he has to preach to. Have I finished preaching to the Gentiles? Have I finished my assignment? So staying behind the bar did not even stop him. Though, I mean, they thought they, kept, they, they thought they have kept him behind the bar, and as long as he's dead, he cannot do anything again, that they were going to stop his ministry, why they have tied him down, but Paul saw it as an opportunity to win more souls to Christ. So they were thinking that as long as we tie him here down, let, let us see what else he can do. He's preaching the gospel. But he saw it as an opportunity to even do more exploit, to even win more souls to, go, to, to, to Christ. For Paul, it was, be, it was the best time to, or an, an, an avenue to reach out to, the, to, the, or to some other prisoners with him there and even to the staff of the prison. It was an avenue. He saw that as an avenue to now speak to the, speak the gospel of Christ to, to, to other prisoners like himself and even to the staff of the prison. So he did not waste that time. Why? He has vision. He's a visionary. Paul said, Paul said in the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, and I quote, I want you to know my brothers and my sisters. 
that everything that has happened to me here has happened to spread the good news of Christ. Hallelujah. That was somebody that was behind by. He said, I want you people to know, my brothers and my sisters, that everything that has happened to me, that they have kept me here bound, is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, like, you know, I talked about the, the staff there. He said, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chain because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. One thing the devil will do is to harass you with fear. So, but Paul was now saying that even because of his imprisonment, that many people around there are now very bold to go and preach the gospel. Maximum impact. He became more influential in the prison. Behind bar, he became more influential. Other believers were gingered to preach the gospel of Christ more and more because they saw that their leader, Paul, who was in prison, was doing more exploit, even behind bars, regardless of what he was going through. Brethren, don't allow yourself to be limited. Be determined to fulfill your destiny. Paul knew where he was going. He understood clearly his purpose on earth. And he made, his, he made up his mind to finish well and to finish strong. So giving attention to the lockdown he found himself in the prison would rob him of his precious time. So by the mercy of God, and he, he overcame the devices of the devil. He did not allow, him, allow himself to be locked down. When you, when, 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 when you, when you, you have vision, you don't see obstacles. You see opportunities. Write it down. When you have visions, you don't see obstacles. You see opportunities. Amen. Don't allow coronavirus to lock your mind down. Even at home, you can write books. You can make dramas. You can do anything you can do to, to, to promote the kingdom of God. There are a lot you can do in the comfort of your home. Don't allow the lockdown to affect you so much so that you don't do anything. You can influence your family, your community, everyone that comes in contact with you. Why? Because you have vision. Think about your vision, reflect on it, think through it, and see how best you can operate, regardless of the situation you may find yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. God will help us in Jesus' name. So the third point I would like us to talk about regarding vision and how to go about it is that you must believe and talk about your vision. Very important. You must believe and talk about your vision. Amen. I put it this way. Visionaries are very bold people. Visionaries, they are very bold people. You should be able to communicate your vision excellently well such that when people hear it, they will run with it. And that takes me back to, our, to the first part of our memory verse. That takes me back to the first part of our memory verse. You see, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. Habakkuk 2.2. When you believe in your vision, you will boldly and plainly talk about it. Your wife, your brothers, your sisters, 
everyone that come in contact with you will hear it and they, 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 will, they, they will walk in it because they see you operating in it. Amen. When your vision is from God, you don't struggle to convince man. Hallelujah. When your vision is from God, you don't struggle to convince man. Some might be jealous. Some may not want to go with you. Rather, they will, want to, they will attempt to stop you. But I tell you what, they believe you because it is from God. Even though they want to sabotage, even though they want to stop you, they believe you because the vision is from God. Hallelujah. I want to talk about a story. Joseph had a serious insight about what the future holds for him. Joseph had a very serious insight about what the future had for him in his own time. Amen. It was very clear to him. He also believed in it so much so that he confidently communicated it to his brothers. And his brothers also believed him and interpreted it to him. Get that right. Talking about Genesis chapter 37, Genesis 37 from verse 5. Joseph communicated his revelation to his brothers. He did not tell them the meaning. He only told them. They interpreted it. Why? They believe it. He had another dream again and he came back to them. On this occasion, before he went to his brothers, he, he shared it with his father. After sharing that, vi that vision again, that there was a star, there, there was moon, there was sun, and 11 this, 11 that. So having said that, the father said, what are you saying? Are you saying to me that your mother and myself and your 11 brothers are going to bow down before you? He did not interpret it. He only told them they interpreted it. Why? It is from God. Then after interpreting it in that manner, his father, his father went back and started that I'm thinking, what is going on here? What is this boy trying to say to us? But Joseph was very, very confident of what he saw. And he knew that it was going to come to pass. Tell somebody, if anybody's around, they say, talk like a dreamer. He talked boldly. So make your vision plain. And when you do that, it will blow people's mind. Joseph's father interpreted that dream, like I said, and started wondering, what, does, what, what is he talking about? If your vision is from God, I repeat, it must surely come to pass. If that dream is from God, it must come to pass. They may try to destroy you, but you will not they will not prevail. Even when they throw you in the pit, you will still rise and fulfill. In the pit, Joseph was seeing the palace. Even when he was sold out, walking his way with the, with the slavery master, they were going down to the Egypt, he was seeing the palace. Even in the prison, he was seeing the palace. Why? God has given him a vision. He did not relent over his vision. Even in the prison, he was, he was seeing the palace. Eventually, he got there. Why? He did not relent. So, when you have revelation, you become a kind of supernatural. You, don't live, you, you are no more ordinary because there's something that you know other people did not know about you. Whether there is food, there is no food. Whether there is money or there is no money, 
your tomorrow is very, very great. You are seeing your tomorrow. You are living, right today, you are living inside of your tomorrow. The dream eventually came to pass. Did they not come down to bow down before him? Yes, they came. Famine made them to relocate to Egypt. And they got there, they bow to him like he saw in the dream. So when God gives you a vision, what you do, just reference him. It's all about him. Just worship him. In the, in the slavery, Joseph was always worshiping God. In the prison, he was referencing God. And God made it to come to pass. Who could have imagined that somebody whom Joseph did not know would go and recommend him? Why? God was right behind him. Hallelujah. I'll take the last point very quickly before we go to our communion. I'm sure we all know that today is communion service as well. Every first Wednesday of the month, we do our communion. And um, before we get there, please get your emblem ready. Because tonight as well, you are going to empower yourself. God help us and God be with us in Jesus' name. So the last point I'll mention here is that you need to rely on God for divine provision when you have a vision. You didn't get that. If you have a vision, you need to rely on God for divine provision. So when there is vision, there is provision. When God gives you a vision and divine instruction, he will also give you provision. He will also provide for that. My Bible tells me in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 4, Deuteronomy 8, verse 4, it says, for all these 40 years, your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not blister or swell. So, when they were journeying 40 years from Egypt to the promised land, there were food, manna from heaven. And he was asking, did you lack anything? There was clothes for them to wear. Their shoe were intact. Nothing happened to them. Why? There was a divine provision because God has made that to happen. It was the will of God for them to embark on that journey. So before you embark on any journey, try and sort it out with God first. And Luke 22, Luke 22, verse 35, Luke 22, verse 35. See, and, um, and he said unto them, when I sent you without pause and pack and shoe, did you lack anything? When I sent you out and instructed you, don't worry, did you lack anything? The reason why many people are not operating in their calling, in their God-given uh, uh, purpose, in, in, in what they are supposed to do, is the fear of provision. Many have discovered their purpose here on earth, but they are, they are scared to embrace it. So they settle for less. Someone that is born to be a medical doctor end up being a carer. They settle for less. Another person who is meant to, to operate in an office of, 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 a, of, of a bishop say they cannot, don't worry, let me just go to church quietly and go home. Some are saying, how will I get there? Do I have money? Provision is from God. When there is vision, there is provision. Amen. So if you step out in faith, God moves with you. Very important. If you step out in faith, God moves with you. So the resources you need to actualize your vision is in the hand of God. Not in, the, in that job, 9 to 5 job. Not in anybody's hand. It is in the hand of God. So be, because the vision is from him, he knows everything you need 
to fulfill that vision. And he would divinely provide them all for you. Shall we get it right? When Joseph, when Joseph was given the office of a prime minister in Egypt, everything as a ruler was given to him, even without him asking, including a wife was given to him without him asking. Divine provision. So from palace, from, from the king, his life changed overnight. Divine provision. Everything he needed. Both clothes, but everything you can think of, including a woman that he did not ask for. So don't sit in your comfort zone and die with that gift. If Joseph in slavery was not doing anything about his gift, nobody would have recommended him to, the, to, to Pharaoh, to the king. The, the, the king had a dream that, he, that confused him. He brought all the magician and all of them to speak about the dream. The king couldn't have give him an answer. But Joseph, why behind, why in, in, in slavery, even in the prison, he was already interpreting dreams. He was doing something about his future. Though he was tied down, his mind was not tied down. He could interpret dream for somebody in the prison. He could tell them the meaning and it came to pass. He was always praying to God. He was asking God, wow, I am here but I know you. Everything shall be well because I know you. Even when the, the dirty opportunity came to him from Potiphar's wife, he, he turned it down because he knows it's not ungodly. The godly one will take him to the palace. And when the time came, what happened? He got to the palace. On getting there, he interpreted the dream and after, after he interpreted he told, uh, 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 he told the, the Pharaoh that, look, this is what you need to do about the dream because it will surely come to pass. So for us not to be in trouble in this land, this is what you are going to do. And what did the man say? He said, nobody else has the kind of wisdom you have. So I would rather give it to you to manage. If you could interpret it like this, then you will manage it better. And his life changed. So who would have imagined, who would have imagined that him leaving his place as a slave will now become a detector? God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So much to say, but we are going to stop here and just go into communion like I have introduced earlier. Please, I'm sure you have your communion emblem very much ready. Um, let's, let's, let's commune with God again and, and tap strength from him. Communion. See, talking about vision, you need to commune with God always. For that vision to be unfolded and even actualized in the end, you need to commune with God always for that vision for, for you. Because when you take communion, you are dining with God, you are having insight, you are having directions. Amen. So communion was a meal Christ took with his followers here on earth before he departed and commanded them to take it often as they they can in remembrance of him. Amen. Communion is a meal that Christ himself took with his followers and commanded them to take it in remembrance of him. His body that was scorched and broken is to heal that cancer. His body that was broken, the body that was conched, is to heal that diabetes, is to heal, is to heal that pile, is to heal that swollen leg, is to heal that blood pressure, that high blood pressure, is to heal coronavirus, is to heal all manner of sickness. By his stripe, you are healed. Hallelujah. The blood of the new covenant is being poured out for us for the forgiveness of sin. The blood of the new covenant is being poured out for us for the forgiveness of sin. Because of what happened in the Garden of Eden, because of what happened in the Garden of Eden, we were born and separated from God by sin.
The only thing that could bridge that gap between us and Holy God is the precious blood of Jesus. His blood has made a way for us to enter into his throne. As you accept the perfect sacrifice of the blood, may God himself grant you salvation. May God himself heal your body. May God himself be with you. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you have your communion, please, let's go ahead and take communion. Let's be mindful of time. He took the bread, lifted it up, and gave thanks. He said, this is my flesh. Eat it in remembrance of me. As you take his flesh tonight, I pray by his tribe you are healed in the name of Jesus. I pray by his tribe you are healed. That cancer is gone in the mighty name of Jesus. That high blood pressure is gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Every sickness is gone tonight. By his tribe we are healed. Amen. Amen. And he took the blood. This is my new covenant. This is enough to make you whole. As you partake of this blood tonight, I pray the blood of Jesus will flush away everything that is ungodly inside your system in the mighty name of Jesus. As you partake of the blood tonight, you are made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will flush away that sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will make you right with him again. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lama sente kebe yanda. La de begada anto koliba shida. Brakata mante rebosata. Liba karabo sente bregede. Manta kababa. Zede begede anto kalibo shita. Ikaba yanda kalibo sete. Brekiti anta lima sata. Ikada bagidi andu kalima sede begede. Anto kolobo shita. Raba kelebe santa manda kaliba sata. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, everyone under my voice, even right now, I command healing in their body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let your prayers be set free. In the name of Jesus, let the body conceive. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lama ande kalebo sidi bigidi antu ikada bagidi anderebo. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, make them whole. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, make a way. In the mighty name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, defend us. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope someone is blessed tonight. God bless you. Amen.